Hello and welcome to Free Scientist. This video is about 1. Reflection and refraction of light 2. Lenses and mirrors 3. Cameras 4. Human eyes 5. Microscopes and telescopes Light or visible light is electromagnetic radiation within the portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that can be perceived by the human eye. Visible light is usually defined as having wavelengths in the range of 400 to 700 nanometers between the infrared, with longer wavelengths, and the ultraviolet, with shorter wavelengths. This wavelength means a frequency range of roughly 430 to 750 terahertz. Reflection is when light bounces off an object. If the surface is smooth and shiny, like glass, water or polished metal, the light will reflect at the same angle as it hit the surface. This is called specular reflection. While refraction is the change in direction of a wave passing from one medium to another or from a gradual change in the medium. Light reflects from a smooth surface at the same angle as it hits the surface. For a smooth surface, reflected light rays travel in the same direction. This is called specular reflection. For a rough surface, reflected light rays scatter in all directions. This is called diffuse reflection. Diffuse reflection is when light hits an object and reflects in lots of different directions. This happens when the surface is rough. Most of the things we see are because light from a source has reflected off it. Refraction occurs when light goes through a water surface since water has a refractive index of 1.33 and air has a refractive index of about 1. Looking at a straight object, such as a pencil in the figure here, which is placed at a slant, partially in the water, the object appears to bend at the water's surface. This is due to the bending of light rays as they move from the water to the air. Once the rays reach the eye, the eye traces them back as straight lines, lines of sight. The lines of sight intersect at a higher position than where the actual rays originated. This causes the pencil to appear higher and the water to appear shallower than it really is. Look at the arrow through a glass of water. It will appear towards the opposite direction. To explain this, you must think about the glass of water as if it is a magnifying glass. When light goes through a magnifying glass the light bends toward the center. Where the light all comes together is called the focal point. But beyond the focal point the image appears to reverse because the light rays that were bent pass each other and the light that was on the right side is now on the left and the left on the right, which makes the arrow appear to be reversed. The diagram explains this better. What is refractive index? The refractive index of a material is a dimensionless number that describes how fast light travels through the material. It is defined as n equals c over v where c is the speed of light in vacuum and v is the phase velocity of light in the medium. For example, the refractive index of water is 1.333, meaning that light travels 1.333 times slower in water than in a vacuum. Increasing the refractive index corresponds to decreasing the speed of light in the material. A mirage is a phenomenon caused by the refraction of light. What is a mirage? It is a kind of optical illusion. One of the types of mirage is that some distant things may seem closer than they are in reality, and it may seem that there are other things floating in the air, such as a mountain or a ship, and the refraction of light is the reason for the occurrence of a mirage and it means bending in the path of light. 
The most common type of mirage is the oasis mirage. Sometimes travelers in the desert experience the mirage when they see a distant pool of water that looks like an oasis, but when they reach the location they find nothing but dry sand. There is another type of mirage called the Fata Morgana mirage, and the Fata Morgana mirage can be observed in the sea or on land, and it is rapidly changing and shows things in the form of compressed or stretched. This optical phenomenon occurs due to the refraction of light rays when they pass through layers of varying temperature of air, which are in a separate and heterogeneous form, which shows the property of thermal reflection, that is, the presence of layers of hot air in direct contact with a layer of cold air, dense and close to the Earth's surface. The presence of this contact leads to the refraction of light rays, which leads to the emergence of this phenomenon due to the formation of what looks like a lens, which leads to the appearance of the shapes upside down. How does mirage happen? Cold air is denser than hot air and therefore has a higher refractive index. When light from cold air passes through a sharp boundary into a considerably warmer atmosphere, the light rays bend away from the direction of the temperature gradient. When light rays go from hotter to colder, the light is bent in the direction of gradient. If the air near the Earth's surface is warmer than that above the level, the beam of light is bent in a concave shape, upward path. Once the beam of light reaches the viewer's eye, the visual cortex interprets it as if it had traveled in a perfectly straight line along the line of sight until it reached the eye. But this line is in fact a slope of the path of the rays taken at the point of their arrival to the eye and the result is that a secondary image from the sky appears on the ground. The viewer may interpret this incorrect scene as water that reflects the image of the sky, which is reasonable and more likely to happen to the brain. In the case where the air near the Earth's surface is cooler than that upper level, the light rays are bent downward, producing an overhead image. The natural state of the Earth's atmosphere has a horizontal slope of about minus 1 degree Celsius at the 100 meters of altitude, negative value because it gets colder as altitude increases. For a mirage to occur, the temperature gradient must be much greater than that. According to the size of the slope, it needs to be at least 2 degrees Celsius per meter, and the mirage does not strengthen until the value reaches 4 or 5 degrees Celsius per meter. These conditions occur when there is strong heating at ground level, for example when the sun shines on sand or asphalt, and the lower picture is formed for this reason. A lens is a transmissive optical device that focuses or disperses a light beam by means of refraction. A simple lens consists of a single piece of transparent material, while a compound lens consists of several simple lenses usually arranged along a common axis. Lenses are made from materials such as glass or plastic, and are ground and polished or molded to a desired shape. A lens can focus light to form an image, unlike a prism, which refracts light without focusing. Devices that similarly focus or disperse waves and radiation other than visible light are also called lenses, such as microwave lenses, electron lenses, acoustic lenses, or explosive lenses. A convex lens is thicker at the center than at the edges, also called converging. A concave lens is thinner at the center than at the edges, also called diverging. Refraction in convex lens. Convex lenses are thicker at the middle. Rays of light that pass through the lens are brought closer together. They converge. A convex lens is a converging lens. When parallel rays of light pass through a convex lens the refracted rays converge at one point called the principal focus. The distance between the principal focus and the center of the lens is called the focal length. Refraction in concave lens. Concave lenses are thinner at the middle. Rays of light that pass through the lens are spread out, they diverge. A concave lens is a diverging lens. When parallel rays of light pass through a concave lens the refracted rays diverge so that they appear to come from one point called the principal focus. The distance between the principal focus and the center of the lens is called the focal length. The image formed is virtual and diminished, smaller. An image formed by a lens is described by the following lens equation 1 over u plus 1 over v equals 1 over f, where u is the distance of the object from the lens, v is the distance of the image from the lens and f is the focal length, which means the distance of the focus from the lens.
Reflection in convex mirror The image formed from a convex mirror is always upright, diminished and virtual regardless of where the object is placed. Rays that are parallel to the principal axis reflect in a direction directly away from the focal point which is halfway between the mirror and the center of curvature for the mirror. When drawing ray diagrams, virtual rays can be drawn to correctly determine the path of the reflected rays. Reflection in concave mirror, when the object is far from the mirror, the image is inverted and at the focal point. The image is real light rays actually focus at the image location. As the object moves towards the mirror the image location moves further away from the mirror and the image size grows, but the image is still inverted. When the object is at the focal point, the image is at infinity. As the object moves towards the mirror inside the focal point the image becomes virtual and upright behind the mirror. Initially the virtual image is much larger than the object and really far away, but as the object approaches the mirror the virtual image also approaches the mirror and decreases in size. The shown diagrams shows how each of concave plane and convex mirrors reflect light. A camera is an optical instrument that captures a visual image. At their most basic, cameras are sealed boxes, the camera body, with a small hole, the aperture, that allows light in to capture an image on a light-sensitive surface, usually photographic film or a digital sensor. Cameras have various mechanisms to control how the light falls onto the light-sensitive surface. Lenses focus the light entering the camera, the size of the aperture can be widened or narrowed to let more or less light into the camera, and a shutter mechanism determines the amount of time the photosensitive surface is exposed to the light. The still image camera is the main instrument in the art of photography and captured images may be reproduced later as a part of the process of photography, digital imaging, photographic printing. The similar artistic fields in the moving image camera domain are film, videography, and cinematography. With a film camera the light entering through the lens strikes the film. Developing the film makes it possible to see the photograph that was taken. With a digital camera the light entering through the lens strikes an image sensor. The signal output by the image sensor is processed within the camera to create image data which is stored on the memory card. The image can be simultaneously viewed on the picture display. Built-in cameras in mobile phones are digital cameras. What is a DSLR camera? DSLR stands for Digital Single Lens Reflex. In simple language, a DSLR is a digital camera that uses a mirror mechanism to either reflect light from a camera lens to an optical viewfinder, which is an eyepiece on the back of the camera that one looks through to see what they are taking a picture of, or let light fully pass onto the image sensor, which captures the image, by moving the mirror out of the way. Although single lens reflex cameras have been available in various shapes and forms since the 19th century with film as the recording medium, the first commercial digital SLR with an image sensor appeared in 1991. Compared to point and shoot and phone cameras, DSLR cameras typically use interchangeable lenses. A zoom lens is a mechanical assembly of lens elements for which the focal length, and thus angle of view, can be varied, as opposed to a fixed focal length FFL lens. A true zoom lens, also called a parfocal lens, is one that maintains focus when its focal length changes. Most consumer zoom lenses do not maintain perfect focus, but are still parfocal designs. Most camera phones that are advertised as having optical zoom actually use a few cameras of different but fixed focal length, combined with digital zoom to make a hybrid system. The convenience of variable focus Focal length comes at the cost of complexity, and some compromises on image quality, weight, dimensions, aperture, autofocus performance, and cost. For example, all zoom lenses suffer from at least slight, if not considerable, loss of image resolution at their maximum aperture, especially at the extremes of their focal length range. This effect is evident in the corners of the image when displayed in a large format or high resolution. 
The human eye is a sense organ that reacts to light and allows vision. Rod and cone cells in the retina are photoreceptive cells which are able to detect visible light and convey this information to the brain. Eye signal information which is used by the brain to elicit the perception of color, shape, depth, movement, and other features. The eye is part of the sensory nervous system. Similar to the eyes of other mammals, the human eye's non-image forming photosensitive ganglion cells in the retina receive light signals which affect adjustment of the size of the pupil, regulation, and suppression of the hormone melatonin, and entrainment of the circadian rhythm. The eye lens is a transparent biconvex structure in the eye that along with the cornea, helps to refract light to be focused on the retina by changing shape. Visual field in practical clinical terms is essentially the area of space that you can see at the same time. In other words it refers to your field of vision or how far out peripherally you are able to see without moving your eyes or head. If light that is reflected or emitted from an object in your surroundings falls onto your retina, then that object will be visible in your visual field. A blind spot or scotoma is an obscuration of the visual field. A particular blind spot known as the physiological blind spot, blind point, or punctum cecum in medical literature, is the place in the visual field that corresponds to the lack of light detecting photoreceptor cells on the optic disc of the retina where the optic nerve passes through the optic disc. Because there are no cells to detect light on the optic disc, the corresponding part of the field of vision is invisible. Processes in the brain interpolate the blind spot based on surrounding detail and information from the other eye, so it is not normally perceived. The Muslim scientist Al-Hassan ibn al-Haytham was the first to explain that vision occurs when light reflects from an object and then passes to one's eyes. He was also the first to demonstrate that vision occurs in the brain, rather than in the eyes. A microscope is a laboratory instrument used to examine objects that are too small to be seen by the naked eye. Microscopy is the science of investigating small objects and structures using a microscope. Microscopic means being invisible to the eye unless aided by a microscope. There are many types of microscopes and they may be grouped in different ways. One way is to describe the method an instrument uses to interact with a sample and produce images either by sending a beam of light or electrons through a sample in its optical path, by detecting photon emissions from a sample, or by scanning across and a short distance from the surface of a sample using a probe. The most common microscope, and the first to be invented, is the optical microscope, which uses lenses to refract visible light that passed through a thinly sectioned sample to produce an observable image. Other major types of microscopes are the fluorescence microscope, electron microscope, both the transmission electron microscope and the scanning electron microscope, and various types of scanning probe microscopes. A telescope is an optical instrument using lenses, curved mirrors, or a combination of both to observe distant objects, or various devices used to observe distant objects by their emission, absorption, or reflection of electromagnetic radiation. The first known practical telescopes were refracting telescopes invented in the Netherlands at the beginning of the 17th century by using glass lenses. They were used for both terrestrial applications and astronomy. The reflecting telescope, which uses mirrors to collect and focus light, was invented within a few decades of the first refracting telescope. In the 20th century, many new types of telescopes were invented, including radio telescopes in the 1930s and infrared telescopes in the 1960s. The word telescope now refers to a wide range of instruments capable of detecting different regions of the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum, and in some cases other types of detectors. Thank you for watching.